Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with hosts Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Android users can find us and subscribe on your Play Music app. Apple users can find us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Stitcher. You can follow us on Spreaker. And you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so that we can spread the word. Let's get into the show. All right, welcome to this week's podcast. We have uh, myself, we have... We have Jimmy's mom, Clara. And we have a special guest, Sean Doherty. Hey, Sean. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? All right. We're good. Very, very good. How are you, man? I hear you're angry today. I am, <laughs> I am wound up. I am ready to go. Well, that's uh, good. I and mean, I am just ready to go. Well, we're going to talk about this this episode because I saw the news. And uh, for those who don't know, Sean and I served together on Pennsylvanians United to protect children. And uh, Sean, why don't you put a little plug in and tell people what we do, man? Sure. Great. Thanks for that. We are uh, an official 501c4 campaign. Uh, We were formed. We are a group of victims and advocates for children that have been sexually abused uh, by adults, and uh, our board was formed uh, to basically hold everybody's feet to the fire. There are so many people in Pennsylvania and organizations and lobbyists that are trying to tear the victim community apart uh, and trying to block uh, our attempts to uh, pass uh, common sense legislation to better protect future generations of children and give past victims uh, of abuse their opportunity to have a say in court. Um, We are holding all the politicians, the media, the lobbyist organizations, all holding their feet to the fire to make sure that this is the last year that Pennsylvania neglects to pass this piece of legislation. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because... Um, of course, you and I have, have talked a lot, and then a uh, uh, good friend of mine, Bobby Ross, uh, wrote an article that talked about how the Pennsylvania grand jury um, really was sparked because you and uh, you and your childhood friend went and reported your abuse to, to District Attorney Kelly Callahan. She handed that over to the AG's office in Pennsylvania. And uh, that led to the Altoona Johnstown Diocese investigation by the grand jury. And uh, that sparked a big outcry by survivors across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And, and then they launched uh, the statewide investigation into into the Catholic Church, uh, which spawned a, a worldwide reaction. And this thing is just, man, it is going crazy. And I think what what the listeners need to hear is that Man, it, like we're seeing the the underbelly of this beast, and just how much money the Catholic Church is throwing to stop us, and to stop the legislatures like uh, like Mark Rossi and uh, others who have common sense legislation uh, that that allow people like you to name your abuser. Um, that's the issue. Like you know, the statute of limitations. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that and and how that's affected you. Sure. I mean, it's an entirely new world now here in the world, in the country and around the world. Like you said, when I was a child, when I was being abused, the the limitation was so, so behind that I only had two years to file a criminal complaint. And I only had five years to file a civil complaint from the age when the abuse stopped. So my abuse stopped at the age of 13. So I had to file a criminal complaint by the time I was 15 years old. And I had to file a civil complaint by the time I was 18 years old. I didn't even know what a statute of limitation was until I was in my thirties. I think I had never even heard of it. So, you you know, you're right. Uh, you know, a handful of guys, uh, and, and thank God for Kelly Callahan, the district attorney of Cambria County, that, that had the, the spine to, to turn this over to the attorney general's office. 
we we have learned story after story, including the one that broke last night here in Pennsylvania. Senator Fulmer was arrested yesterday by the Attorney General's Office and Homeland Security for downloading and possessing child pornography. He admitted to it. He was arrested. He set bail. He made bail of $25,000. The ironic thing, he has been one of the major proponents of our fight in Pennsylvania. You know, he, I sat in his damn office, sat across the table from Senator Fulmer, attempting to get him to take this legislation up in his caucus. And, and he almost laughed me out of the office. He said he's dead set against the child statutes of limitation reform. And he was even more against the retroactive window that is that most controversial part, because he said that it uh, goes against the the um, Constitution of Pennsylvania. Well, and that's, what, are, that's insane, man. I'm, it's insane. We're <laughs> sitting out there. Victims are sitting in the Senate hallways, begging, pleading for our lives. And a child predator has a key to the executive washroom in the Capitol. To block the I, law. I mean, yeah. He, yeah. To block the law. Mm -hmm. That's how embedded these guys are. You know, Jimmy, you you say it all the time in your talk. Hidden in plain sight. These guys yeah. like to like to act in plain sight. He's inside the caucus room, inside the Senate caucus room, while the while the victims are on the outside looking in. And, and while and while he's downloading child porn. He's downloading child child porn. And has child porn on his phone and posting inside it. the Senate. It's unbelievable. He posted it's unbelievable. And that's how that's how he got uh how he got found out. Somebody saw that he posted it um child porn up on Tumblr and they reported him to the AG's office and God bless um Attorney General Josh Shapiro because he took action immediately and investigated immediately. and found out. Uh, uh, it's mean, incredible. Josh man. doesn't play. No, Josh does not play. No, he doesn't. No, and it's great. <laughs> yeah, no. it's great. But I it's... mean, you know, as angry as I am, and I am livid. I've been livid since last night. But like I like I told you earlier before we started recording, I, I've never been so angry and so happy at the same time in my life. This is going to be the tipping point, so that. Joe Scarnati, I believe, is going to be forced to, to do something right under the Senate pro temp's nose. Yeah. There is a guy in his caucus room right under his nose downloading child porn, and Joe Scarnati's protecting him and saying that, you know, oh, he's great on on protecting children and all this. He's been horrible on this. So I mean, it's right under. He's been his abusing nose kids while he's room. yeah. He's been abusing kids because that's the thing that people need to understand. Child pornography is not benign. Um, these are real children who are being put in sexually compromising positions. They're actually being abused, and these guys are downloading the, these images. Like these are real children. They're not real actors. Real children. I I just read an article from Penn Live right before you called. It's posted. The senator resigned. One of the images is of a young girl performing oral sex on a man. Wow. These are real children. This is not cartoon. This isn't made up. These are grown men having sexual urges for children. In sexual situations and trading I mean, and trading the images sickness. and videos. And I mean, trading they're, them. they're trading them online. It's not like he's just Absolutely. viewing them. He's uploading images to Tumblr. I mean, this is insane, man. It, and I wanted to point out too. I think this is really important. Um, you know, it might be to a little lesser degree, but but it still shows how tone deaf our senators are. And uh, you know, Mom and I sat in in. Um, Senator Stefano's office and he's in our area. You know, he's our senator. Mm -hmm. And he's a he's a devout Catholic and we went in there and told him a little bit about our story. Um and and he was very nice, you know. He was polite. He he wasn't he wasn't rude. Um 
he actually left session to come out and meet with us, and I appreciated that. I thought that was very respectful of him. But it wasn't until I left his office and I did a, just a little bit of digging, and I found out that he had an aide who was arrested earlier that year for uh, soliciting sex with a minor. And I'm like, in his office, this was going on. And he's opposed to this yep. legislation. I mean, we, we've seen it time and time again in churches, in legislators' office, in doctors' offices, in schools, in people's homes. This, this, is, this is a rampant, rampant problem in our country. There is a percentage of our society that are so sick-minded that, that this is okay for them. And, and they protect one another. They cover for one another. And they hold some of the highest positions in the biggest companies, the biggest churches, the legislation. They're, they're entrenched in our society. And they're, they're performing these acts and doing these right under society's noses, right out in the open. And, but, and people are just willing to turn their heads and allow it because it was just taboo. It was just taboo to talk about, which is a whole nother topic and sick to begin with. But it's just not taboo anymore. These are coming out one after another after another. It, there is no putting the lid back on this bottle. Nope. You know, and, and I think that's these, the difference between now and be caught. Yep. I think that's the difference between now and even even three years ago. And I'm working my way through uh, Rachel Den Hollander's book, What Is a Girl Worth? And man, there are so many details in that 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 I just I had no idea. And she went up against a giant beast and single handedly took that on, <laughs> you know, n not having any hopes that this would ever be uncovered with Larry Nasser and, um, you know, it just the amount of cover ups and how deep that went and how many abusers were involved in that. Cause it wasn't just Larry Nasser, you know, it was, it was abuser after abuser after abuser. And these guys are powerful. There's so much money. And this is not a conspiracy. These people are in prison. A lot of these people from MSU and USAG gymnastics, you know, they're, they're going to prison where they belong. Absolutely. Another case, you know, I was uh, thankful to have been invited to uh, Dr. Uh, Johnny Barto, a former pediatrician, former being the key word there. Mm -hmm. He is in, uh, in a state penitentiary in Pennsylvania right now serving a 150 plus year sentence. You know, uh, I was in the courtroom. I got to see his victims wow tell him to his face what it did to them i saw his wife i heard what his wife told him in the courtroom if anybody was in that courtroom that had any doubt whatsoever that he did it or didn't do it after you heard what his wife said to him you'd never doubt it again these guys are entrenched within our society but the house of cards is coming down it's it is. Just, it is coming down. I, I, I had the opportunity to go to the Vatican for uh, the, the, the Vatican summit on child sexual abuse in February. I was fortunate to be one of 12 survivors in the world that had the opportunity to uh, address and meet with the conference leaders. And I told them, no matter whether you like it or not, the Catholic Church is just no longer the strongest entity on earth. That now belongs to social media. Social media, I know, gets a bad rep on a lot of things, and it can be misused for many, many purposes, such as downloading child porn. However, it is a huge tool that is also bringing all of the survivor community together. We are aware of one another now. We are speaking to one another now. And we are having these people arrested. Yeah, absolutely. And I think beyond social media, um, the uh, the mainstream media has been incredible, man. They, 
I'm looking at some of these reporters and uh, they're phenomenal and they're taking their time and they're investigating these. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to a reporter right now. There's, um, you know, I, I think if she gathers enough uh, of a story and I think it's going to happen, there's going to be another bombshell story that's uh, released here soon. Um, you know, it's they're doing their job and they're doing it well. And they're doing the same job that people in the church should be doing. Just looking into it and believing survivors and telling their stories and saying, we're not going to tolerate abuse. And it's a shame. Absolutely. That, it's a shame that the media has become what the church should be. And the church is, yeah. I mean, generally the church is on the polar opposite end of that spectrum. They're throwing everything they can at this to protect these abusers and, and to keep survivors silenced and, to belittle them, to shut them up, to kick them out of the church, to tell them to forgive and move on. You know, everything that they've got, they're thrown at survivors to keep them from f really from healing and exposing their abusers so that more kids don't get hurt. And, and fortunately for us, it's no longer working anymore. That game just will not work any longer. That's right. You know, for the longest time I've, 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 spoken with many journalists, many reporters, many investigative reporters, and, and they've told me for, for years, writers have wanted to write on this subject, but their bosses, the executives who are under the gun and under the pressure of places like the church and the insurance that are getting threatened, that were getting threatened, we're, you know, would squash these stories. No, we can't write that. The church will crucify us. No, we can't write that. No, we can't. Now, the executives are saying, we have to write these things. I'm not getting thrown under the bus for these guys. I'm not taking the heat for these guys. You know, so yeah. it, it's a it's a whole nother time now. It, I mean, so, you know, Jimmy, I just I, I came out publicly right after the Altoona Johnstown report was released. And, and that was in and 20, I can't 2016, it, wasn't it? That was in 2016. Yeah. And and I can't even compare that time to today. It, it has, if somebody was told me the day that I was going to come out, that I would end up at the Vatican, I'd be like, are you crazy? There is <laughs> no way I'm going to, you got to be out of your mind. They aren't going to have me over there. It, it's, it's a totally, totally different game now. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, I, I think that uh, survivors are just fed up. They're angry. And every time something like this, where you have a senator or you have um, you know, a lawmaker of any kind or a judge or a doctor or whoever it is, any time that, that these people who are supposedly so, so against abuse but they're lethargic – when that comes out that they're abusers themselves, man, it just fuels you guys. And I've seen that. Like, <laughs> it was interesting sitting back and just watching, watching your fire get, f you know, that flame was just fanned, <laughs> where you're just like this raging bonfire right now, ready to <laughs> ready to stand up for justice and to stand up for other victims so they don't get hurt. It, it is. It, call it call it my military backing or or whatever. <clears throat> But when that when that door is cracked, you you kick it in. You do not you do not dwell and say, "Oh, we have a chance." No, you kick it in and take it over. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. It just it is our time. It is the time for us to act. It is the time for us to unite uh, even more than we are so now, and and seize the moment. You know, carpe diem. Carpe diem, seize the time, seize the day, take yeah. the time. Well, where do you see um, Pennsylvanians United? You know, what, you and I are both part of that with some really incredible people uh, and even other people who uh, were part of it and, and they're still cheering us on. Uh, I don't even want to say from the sidelines because that's, that's too offensive. They're not on the sidelines at all. They're fighting this battle just like we are. Um, but there are big supporters of, of Pennsylvanians United. Um, I think we really surprised the heck out of Harrisburg when, when we came back organized, um, because Joe Scarnati did 
what they've been doing for years and years and years in Pennsylvania, where they just they run the clock down, um, or they vote no, and they just hope that survivors get worn down and they go away. And that's been effective for decades. And it's no longer effective. So do you think they're surprised that uh, that we came back organized and stronger than ever? That They're more than surprised. They're shocked. And I guarantee you, in that closed caucus room, they are saying uh, to Joe Scarnati that he has seriously underestimated our strength and our resilience and our tenacity severely underestimated it and he tried to run the same game that has worked for decades it's a new decade now and they need a new game and the only game that we will surrender well we will accept from them is a game called surrender that's awesome man hi Mom, you've been quiet. I have uh, been very quiet. Are you just taking this all in? I, well, you know why, Jimmy. Because I, I never I, shut up. That's I why. Have, no. <laughs> I have always said when we have those who are so anti something that is right and good, beware because somewhere embedded in that is somebody doing really dirty stuff. Just like our fellow who Fulmer who came out yesterday was found out, um, it doesn't shock me at all. There are more, I am sure, and it's just one cover up, like you said, Sean, one cover up after another after another, but no more. And what shocks me though, but doesn't shock Jimmy, or I'm sure doesn't shock you, is these guys don't run scared. It, it it's like, how could this guy be downloading a porn, child pornography? And then look Sean, a survivor then, in the eyes, and, yes. and belittle him and, and say, "I'm opposed to I'm opposed to this." And it just <laughs> it's unreal. It it is unreal, but it just proves Jimmy what you have been saying for five years now. Yeah, they're wolves. They the, do yes, not care. They do abusers not care. do not care they about victims. They do not change. They are who they are, and I'll just say it's dirt. That's all. You know, yep. you, you can't change. You can't change somebody that's that low. You really can't. No. You, you can't. Well, one, thing, one thing that I am absolutely reveling in, in in this announcement of this arrest today is they did a forensic computer check, and as you said, Jimmy, he shared it. Yeah. Anybody yeah. that knows that they shared it with him right now, I'm filled with rage. They are trembling in fear right now. Not because they're ashamed of what they did, because I don't think that they are ashamed. No, I no. agree with you nope. and your mom. Mm -mm. They're not ashamed. This is who they are. And this is what they do. However, they are scared to death to be caught and to be found out because they, the abusers, although they are unable to control their urges and not act out on them, they do understand fear. And they do understand that this is a different time and that if they are found out, they will be prosecuted uh, to the fullest extent of the law. I mean, uh, the attorney general is not playing. Well, you it'll know, be he interesting. He is arresting people. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and he even said in his uh, in his brief, he said, "I don't care who you are, or uh, how much power you have, or what position you're in. Uh, if you if you abuse minors, um, I'm coming after you." And I love that Absolutely. about Josh Shapiro. You know he does what? not play favorites. Right. I keep thinking I of the a phrase "a few good men," and that's what we have here. We have a few good men who, it, it, you, Jimmy, and, you know, that handful, that nucleus, who started this ball really rolling. And, man, it is a tidal wave right now. And I'm loving it. I am loving it right along with you. It's about time. It'll right, be guys. interesting to see where this case goes, too, because um, just because of that uh, 
image or images, whatever it was. It was kind of unclear in the article, but you know, it definitely said that he uploaded images to Tumblr. Um, that that becomes a federal jurisdiction now. And it'll be interesting to see. I'll bet you the FBI is going to investigate him now. Um, absolutely. I would hope uh, so. In the article, yeah. Josh. A- absolutely, Josh Shapiro said that Homeland Security was at, were, was with him when they raided his home. Oh, okay, certain, I missed that in the article. Yep, that makes sense because it's a it, it becomes a federal if, crime. Absolutely, and if you can remember, there was just a recent uh, article out just a few weeks ago that a former priest from Philadelphia was arrested not for child porn, but for uh, or for sexually abusing children which he did and was removed from ministry for, but he lied to federal agents and they found out and he was arrested. If you remember, Al Capone was brought down. He wasn't brought down for murder or racketeering or intimidation. He was brought down for tax evasion. These guys are going down, you know, one way or the other, they're going down. There's too many agents and agencies that are investigating them now. They're yeah. going to go down. Yeah, I agree. No, I think uh, I, th- I think we need to give a message to other survivors who've felt so defeated um, time and time and time again that, you know, if there's any way that we can help them dust themselves off and get back up again and just join with other survivors and, and fight this battle, man, if they have any bit of a fight left, um, their voices are so needed. They're so, so needed. Absolutely. And, and I can say this to, to the survivors and the victims that are out there listening to this right now. When I was 24 years old, I attempted to take my own life. And I can tell you over the course of this last three years, since I've been public, there have been hard, hard days struggling. I lost my business over this. I lost, I lost a lot of things over this. Honestly, I can honestly tell you there have been days over the last three years, especially the last year, that I was at a lower point than the day that I attempted suicide. What we have now, though, is we have the mechanism in place. We have social media. We have support groups. We have contacts out there. You are not anywhere near alone in this. Don't think for a second you are. Get on the computer. Get on Facebook. Get on Twitter. Get on Messenger. At any given time of the day, doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the afternoon or the middle of the night, you can find somebody like you on the computer that can talk you through any situation. I have friends in Poland. I have friends in Australia. I have friends in Ireland. I have friends on the other coast of this country in California. You, the, the network community that we have really helped me in those dark times, times that I did not have things, tools that I did not possess when I was 24. I have at my fingertips now. And when I'm down, I jump on a group page. You see us, Jimmy, all the time in our in Pennsylvania's United Group Messenger. Yeah, we talk constantly to yeah. one another. When one is struggling, one is the other one is quick to jump in and lift them up. Always, you know, we're here. You, we're with you. You yep. can get through this. We'll get through this together. You know, really rely on your on on your social media friends and and just talk yourself through it. There is a brighter day ahead. Just bear with us, get through it, and th- there's brighter days coming. Absolutely. And there are people fighting for you. And uh, man, if you're at a place where you're not strong enough to fight, then um, then sit back and, and rest and take care of yourself and exactly. know that there are people out there and uh, and lots of them, lots and lots of people who are fighting for you. And uh, yeah, we, I, I know uh, I know Pennsylvanians United. We're not going anywhere, and uh, we're just one small group um, 
in the country that's just fed up and we're pushing back and we're going to we're going to keep exposing this until uh until abusers are backing down it, because right now they're not they're still not so well, we're going to keep fighting you man. know you know as well as i do pennsylvanians united is just getting going yeah yeah you know, we're just out of the gate you know we we just we just formed our 501c4 and and we we are we are going for it we are not waiting we are not hesitating we're not to those that are opposed to us we we just not you can like it you cannot like it that's just tough we're coming and we're not gonna quit absolutely well sean as always man it uh it's always a pleasure having you and thank you for uh for your input and for your insight and just for being a fighter um i just uh, i've always looked up to you and uh I appreciate when everybody, when all the survivors were ready to give up and uh, we didn't think the Pennsylvania grand jury report was going to be released. I remember you putting messages out there, just telling people, hang on. That's Sean's message. Always hang on, just hang on. And, uh, and they hung on and look what happened. I mean, here we are a year later. It's unbelievable what's happened. Well, I appreciate that, Jimmy. And I'll tell you, I mean, you, you are a beloved friend of mine. I mean, you, you are fighting so hard that the things that you have accomplished aren't easy either. Uh, you know, you're a victim yourself. You, you're not a victim of childhood sexual uh, assault, but you, you've had this issue in your family. And, and you should be very proud. I know that it was probably a gut-wrenching thing that you did with your father, but, but you should be incredibly proud that you weren't one of those guys that turned their head and said you know you you always have that to hang your hat on and for that of the victim community support forever yeah well thank you sean and mom was with me it takes strong people like that it takes strong people like you and your mom uh to 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 do this it it uh it it really does you you you've started a movement and uh and this movement isn't going to stop. Well, we appreciate you, man. And uh, again, as always, it's a pleasure having you with us. And uh, to our listeners, um, we'll catch you next episode. Thanks again for listening to today's episode of the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast. Thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker, Subscribe on Google Play Music, Apple Podcast, or Stitcher. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron. And check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse. <laughs>